What's up guys, it's Ty aka Timberlands. Welcome back to my channel. And of course I have another update for you. So stick around to watch. Today's video is gonna be a little different. We're gonna go over regular information as far as symptoms and just kind of where I am. And then we're gonna dive into some more information that may be relevant and or helpful to you. Today I am 31 weeks pregnant. In a few days I will be 32 weeks. So time is just moving along. At 31 weeks, the baby is about the size of a coconut. Um, weighs about 3.2 pounds and is about 16 inches long. Now, obviously like coconut, I'm sure they just mean maybe like the weights because um, obviously the baby is longer than a coconut, but that's just what the what to expect app gives. So that's the information I'm giving you. And again, all babies are different. I am pretty positive my baby is around four pounds already because at the last update, she was already weighing about 3.2 ounces, give or take. As far as um, the frequency of her movement, it is pretty much the same or even more frequent like she's moving right now. But the way the movement feels has changed considerably. So whereas before I was feeling like um, kicks, like strong kicks and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Now it feels like a lot of rolling and pushing, like a lot of pushing as if she's doing like is if she's stretching and pushing as far to my right side as she possibly can. And it is getting a little uncomfortable, I will admit, but I know that's just her adjusting and getting ready. She's probably in the next few weeks going to get into a very comfortable final position before she finally makes her arrival. So I'm just dealing with it as it comes. So I've also been having a lot of round ligament pain, Braxton Hicks and frequent urination and a very inconsistent appetite. So some days I wanna eat everything and some days I don't wanna eat anything. As far as the pressure on the bladder goes, I'm pretty positive that is not gonna go away for the rest of this pregnancy. So I am just going to bite the bullet and deal with it like I have to, I don't really have a choice. Um, but everything at this point, I'm pretty sure is like super squished. And I can also tell that she's running out of room because she can no longer turn around as easily as she used to. And again, she's doing a lot more pushing against the side of my uterus because she cannot do bungee jumps inside of my insides anymore. So really, really fun. I wanted to talk about round ligament pain, Braxton Hicks, and other aches and pains that you may be having at this point in pregnancy. I want to start by saying that anytime you have a concern, always, always, always contact your provider just because it's good to know the information so that you can kind of be prepared and you don't freak out. But if you're ever concerned or something doesn't feel right, always, always, always contact your provider first, okay? Let them know what's going on. Even if it's something that may seem normal, I always tell my midwife everything that I'm experiencing um, just so she is in the know and she can kind of direct me from there. But again, knowing what some of these aches and pains can be can also save you a trip to the hospital or um, it could put you at ease just a little bit so that you're not completely freaking out, especially if you're only 31 or 32 weeks pregnant and you know you are very antsy about preterm labor or anything like that. Let's talk Braxton Hicks. Braxton Hicks are practice labor. And typically in the second trimester, some women, every pregnancy is different, also keep that in mind as I'm going over this information. Usually in the second trimester, women will begin to feel Braxton Hicks and those are practice contractions for labor. So Braxton Hicks contractions usually aren't painful. They last about 30 seconds to two minutes or so and they're very sporadic. Now, one thing that I will say is that everyone's uterus is different and everyone's pain tolerance is different. Some women may have a very sensitive uterus that can get irritable or irritated very easily. So Braxton Hicks might actually be causing you some pain. Um, I've heard that from many, many women. So, you know, obviously it's something that just varies person to person. Typically it's something that doesn't cause you pain as much as it causes you discomfort. Um, but again, like I said, every pregnancy and every person is different. So a Braxton Hicks feels like your uterus tightening up into a really, really hard ball and then it relaxes. 
Normally, you can get rid of it by changing positions or drinking water or going to the restroom. Or sometimes even after using the restroom, you might get a Braxton Hicks, but usually they might come if your bladder is full. And they also could be triggered by the movement of your baby. A lot of it just depends. It seems like anything can trigger my Braxton Hicks. I can sneeze and then I'll get a Braxton Hick or like I can look at a piece of bread and then I get a Braxton Hick. So that is a Braxton Hick and you will have them up until the time that you actually start having real deal Holyfield labor. So expect them and uh, just try to find ways to cope with them. One thing that my midwife did recommend is that if the Braxton Hicks are starting to get very uncomfortable or annoying, you can take a magnesium supplement and usually for pregnant women, you can take about 350 milligrams a day. Um, so that is something that usually can relax um, the contractions and kind of make them taper off so that they're not constantly bothering you. So that's something that you can try if you are very annoyed by your BH contractions. I know that I am, um, but I am trying to cope with them because I'm also practicing breathing every time I have one. Even though it's not painful, you know, practicing breathing is going to help me in the long run. So that's just what I do, you know. The other thing I want to talk about is round ligament pain. So with round ligament pain, usually um, it is typically concentrated to one side. Again, every woman is different. So, you know, you might feel it on both sides. Um, you might not feel them at all. It really, really just depends. But typically it is concentrated on one side and it can be a dull achy pain or it can be a sharp pain. So um, I have been having a lot, a lot, a lot of round ligament pain in the past week. And um, at first it freaks me out because <laughs> I do recall having some early in the second trimester, but I think over time I kind of stopped noticing it maybe, or maybe now it's just intensified, but I was having like some cramping that was concentrated to the right side and I figured it was round ligament pain, but I went ahead and told my provider anyway, my midwife, and she just kind of reaffirmed me. She uh, checked through my symptoms and she was like, yeah, round ligament pain, you're fine. I haven't really taken anything. Some women will take Tylenol to help with any aches and pains that they may have throughout pregnancy. I'm not a medicine person, so I didn't do anything for it, but... You know, anytime I would have them, I would just try to change positions or start doing like stretches that help the groin area and the hip and the pelvis. And I would get a little relief, but sometimes, you know, I just had to kind of wait it out to see if it got better. So, um, you know, there's things that you can do to help, but ultimately it's really normal. And it's usually a pretty good sign that, you know, everything is growing the way it should be. Um, especially toward the end of your pregnancy. So a question came up recently, and I think it's a really good question because it can kind of help you differentiate between a few things and also kind of give you an indicator of when you absolutely need to go get checked out or go to the hospital or whatever the case is. So there's Braxton Hicks and then there's your baby pushing. So my baby does a lot of pushing. Like she'll I'm assuming stretch her legs out as far as she can and then it ends up being like a really hard spot on my uterus. The difference is a Braxton Hicks is going to make your entire uterus hard. So you can touch it and for the most part, every part of your stomach is gonna be very, very firm. With a baby pushing or maybe changing positions or something like that, you'll usually get a hard spot concentrated to just one area, but you can touch the rest of your uterus and most of it's going to be pretty relaxed. So that is the difference. And again, it can kind of help you look at indicators to see whether or not you need to move forward in a certain direction. I have had this past week, I have had to do a lot of like, okay, is that the baby pushing or is that a Braxton Hicks? Just because, um, I just wanted to make sure I wasn't having too many in a short period of time. The other thing with Braxton Hicks is that they should be sporadic. So if you're still not at that term point, like you haven't reached term um, and your baby would still be premature, it is important to pay attention to like the pattern of the Braxton Hicks. So ideally you should not have more than six in one hour. If you have more than six in an hour, you definitely need to go to the hospital just to get checked because that could be a sign of preterm labor. 
when you're just having practice labor, like again, if it is before the 37, 36 or 37 week mark, you definitely want to make sure that um, you go get checked. Like you need to have your cervix checked to make sure it is still closed. So that is the main thing. Just make sure that you do get checked. Make sure everything's good. No problem. But yeah, so this week I've been having a lot of all of that baby pushing, Braxton Hicks, round ligament pain, sciatica, like I've had it all. And I, again, I did contact my midwife just to make sure everything was okay, but we're still good. You know, everything's still on track, but I just wanted to kind of go into that because I know I've had those questions. So I know like a lot of people probably have had those questions too. As usual, try to stay off of Mr. Google because it will not diagnose you. It will probably cause you a lot of anxiety for no reason. So stay away. <laughs> and again, if you have any like issues or concerns or something doesn't feel right, always, always, always contact your provider first to make sure that everything's all good. Well, anyway, guys, I hope that was helpful. That is pretty much all I have for you today. Um, thank you so much to the people who participated in the giveaway. I'm going to be having more giveaways before the baby comes. So please stay tuned. Be sure to follow me on Instagram at Timberlands or Nails by Timberlands. I will drop all of my social media information down in the description. So please go check that out to see. And then, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I will see y'all soon. Next week, maybe. Yes, yeah, next week because it's the end of this week. So, yeah, I'll see y'all soon. Bye.